Hey, what's up, guys? My name is Nick Acosta, and I want to welcome you guys to Let's Grow in Christ, where I help you to grow in Christ. I help you to grow in your relationship with God, your faith in his word, your faith in his faithfulness, your trust in him, um, your desire to live for him, to serve him, to please him, your desire to evangelize and share the gospel with unbelievers uh, in the world where, where we help you to grow in your knowledge of the word of God, your knowledge of the will of God. So we just want to give you truth in this channel. So if you haven't subscribed yet, go ahead and subscribe to this channel. Like this video if you like it. Once I'm done, share it if you think it's going to help somebody grow in Christ. And let's get to it, y'all. Today, we're going to talk about Jesus dying. Who did he die for? We're going to talk about Jesus dying for everyone, every person in the world, every person uh, who, who, who was a Jew, every person who is not a Jew, every person who was uh, alive in the days of Jesus, and every person who has been born since then. Let's talk about Jesus dying for everyone because it's a great, great biblical truth and in a revelation that once we get it, we will see the importance of sharing the gospel. We will see the importance of Romans 10 where it says, how will they be saved if they don't hear the gospel? And how will they hear the gospel if there's not a preacher out there preaching the gospel to them? Because faith comes from what? actually hearing what to have faith in, hearing the word of God. That's what Romans 10 teaches. It says that people can only have faith if they hear the message that they're supposed to have faith in. And that's the message of Jesus. So let's grow. Let's talk about it. I want to show you a couple of scriptures, guys. We're going to start with John, of course, John 3, 16. Okay, I'm going to show you what the Bible says about Jesus dying for everyone to be saved. It's God's will that all be saved. Check it out. So it says in John 3, 16, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whoever believes that word right there, whoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. So we see that it connects with the rest of the scriptures that tell us people must believe in him. Uh, but it shows that key word right here, whoever, that points to anybody, everybody, according to the will of God, everybody, right? God wants everybody to be saved. So Jesus came to the world, what, what, for what, what purpose? For everybody to be saved, everyone to be saved, right? He wants everybody to have everlasting life and not perish. The next scripture I want us to read comes from 2 Corinthians 5.15. It says, and he died for all that those who, whoa, and he died for all. That's it. That's all we got to look at. And he died for all, 2 Corinthians 5.15. And he died for all that those who live should live no longer for themselves, but for him who died for them and rose again. So that not only tells us that Jesus died for everybody, right? He died for all, very clear, but it also says that those who do believe in him and get born again, they're not just supposed to continue living life the way they always did. They're supposed to live life for him, not for themselves, for him. So that also gives us a, uh, a, a strong, convicting discipleship uh, uh truth for us now that we're christians our lives are supposed to be about him not us or not us thinking how he's he saved us one day one day we were born again back in the day when i became a christian back in the day when i said yes when i believed in him when i went up to church and and i confessed and i said the prayer he wants us now that we're born again to live for him so that's you know we'll get that uh, we'll get into that another day. That's more, you know, um, discipleship. And that's more about how we're supposed to live and, and what God's will is for us now that we're Christians. But we're talking about what God's will is for all people. Why did Jesus come? First Timothy 2.4 says, who desires, it's talking about God, right? Who desires all men to be saved and to come to the knowledge of the truth? 
So it's very clear. God wants everybody to come to the knowledge of the truth of the gospel of Jesus Christ, right? That's why he wants us to preach because he wants people to hear. And if they hear, they can know the truth and actually believe it and be justified, be born again, right? So it's God's will that all men be saved and come to the knowledge of the truth. It's so clear. The next scripture we're going to look at, guys, is 2 Peter 3, 9. It says, the Lord is not slack concerning his promise, as some count slackness, but is long suffering toward us, not willing. This is God's will right here. Not willing. So this, this is saying that God does not will for this to be. Not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. So it's telling us it is not God's will that people perish in hell, that people die without being followers of Jesus. People who do his word, who follow his teachings and commandments and instructions and live the same life that Christ lived. It's not his will that anybody goes to hell because they stayed in their sins and the wages of their sin is, 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 is death, is hell, right? But it's his will right there. It says, but. So that's, it changes. It changes the thought. So it says, God doesn't want anybody to perish, but he does want this, right? He wants that all should come to repentance. It's so clear. Let's look at Romans chapter 10, verses 12 through 13. It says, there is no distinction between Jew and Greek. For the same Lord over all is rich to all who call upon him. So right there it says, his grace, his, his, the richness of his favor and goodness is for all. Not just some people, not just for Jews, not just for... For all people, his grace is there available for anybody and everybody that will call on him to get it, to receive his grace. That's why it says we've been saved by grace, but it says through faith, you only call on a God that you believe in is real and exists. Amen. So it says overall is rich to all who call upon him. For whoever calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. So that's so clear for us, guys, that God wants everybody to be saved. He died for everybody. Jesus Christ gave his blood, his flesh. He went to the cross. He suffered the worst of torments and tortures and persecutions than any man has ever or will ever suffer. And he did it for all people to give every single individual human being a chance at being forgiven of their sins, born again, receive the spirit of God so that they can bear the fruit of the spirit, live for God, bear fruit to God, do the things that Jesus has called us to live, to do as his disciples, and one day inherit eternal life and live forever in God's kingdom. That's good news. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Right? So it says, Whoever calls on the name of the Lord. That's why it's so important that we share the gospel with as many people as we can, y'all, because he wants everybody to hear it, to give them a chance to humble themselves and believe it and repent and call on the name of the Lord. Praise God. Come on, y'all. Let's go to the next verse. It's going to come from Matthew 10, 22. It says, and you will be hated by all for my name's sake. This is Jesus talking, right, to his disciples. He's telling his disciples that people are going to hate them because of Jesus. And check it out. It says, but he who endures to the end will be saved. So who will be saved? All the verses we looked at, it says salvation is available for every single person. Jesus Christ died for everybody to be saved, for everyone to be saved. It's God's will that everybody be saved, that none perish, right? But then Jesus teaches those who are already his followers, his disciples, he says to them, he who endures to the end will be saved. Okay, so we have to remember that. Even though it's God's will for everybody to be saved, Jesus died for everybody to believe and not perish so that they can have eternal life. People will not, not all people will be saved. Not all people will receive eternal life not all people will make it into god's kingdom that is what it's saying right here he who endures to the end will be saved so you can be born again you can be justified by faith you can be saved by my grace by my work right by my blood on the cross is, is what jesus is saying but you must continue in the faith you must follow me the rest of your life 
do what I tell you to do. And if you endure the persecutions and if you endure, you overcome temptation, right? You you allow me to sanctify you and to teach you and to mature you. You you gather with the saints and hear teachings and get trained up in righteousness and you learn how to deny yourself and walk in the spirit and not in the flesh because those who walk in the works of the flesh will not inherit the kingdom of God, right? So if you continue, Jesus says, if you endure, what? you will be saved so that's key right there y'all even though we understand the fact that god wants everybody to be saved jesus died for every single person every body not everybody will be saved not everybody will make it to the kingdom of god not everybody will have eternal life only those who of course believe in him and call on him and follow him but jesus said those who endure not for a little bit to the end that's why that's why preachers like me were so passionate about emphasizing that church attendance will not help you make it to the kingdom of God. Because if all you do is go to church once or twice a week, but you're not really in relationship with God, you don't know him, you're not asking him to teach you and to convict you and to give you wisdom, you're not reading his word to learn his will and apply it to your life and become doers of the word and not hearers only, like James says, right, if you're not doing that, chances are you're not going to endure to the end. You're not going to overcome temptation. You're not going to walk in the spirit. You're not going to submit to God and resist the devil if you're not growing spiritually, if you're not feeding your mind and renewing your mind with the truth of God and applying it so that you can be transformed. That's why it's so important that we get discipled. That we get serious about God, that we stop playing and acting like Christianity is just an attendance thing or a Facebook post, Instagram picture thing. No, it must be a lifestyle because we must grow so strong in the spirit and, 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 and so committed and devoted to the things of the Lord that we actually overcome by faith, endure to the end, fight the good fight of faith, and run the race with endurance that is set before us all the way until we die or until the Lord comes back and he says to us, well done, you endure to the end. Here's the crown of life. Here's the crown of righteousness. Welcome into my kingdom, uh, faithful servant. Well done. Come on, I have a mansion for you. Come in. It's so important that we endure. So God wants everybody to be saved. He wants everybody to believe. Jesus died for everyone to be saved, but not everybody will be saved, unfortunately. That's the bad news, but that's why it's so important that we get out there and we preach the gospel to the lost. We share the gospel. That's why he says we are to be his witnesses. Amen? Check out Luke uh, chapter 13, verses 25 to 28, guys. It says, this is Jesus talking. A parable, but a prophecy of what's to come in the future, right? When he's judging, right? When, you know, in, in the book of Revelation, this is, this is a parable, but it's a future teaching, warning prophecy about those who say, Lord, aka those who confess Jesus, and who think they're going to make it and be saved and enter his kingdom, but Jesus says otherwise. It says, when once the master of the house has risen up and shut the door, and you begin to stand outside and knock at the door, saying, Lord, Lord, open up for us. And he will answer and say to you, I do not know you. Where are you from? Then you will begin to say, we ate and drank in your presence and you taught in our streets. Right? These are people who are there alive in the days of Jesus and who were paying attention to his teachings and following his ministry so that it's not that's not what it's about you you could go to church and conferences and read christian books and hear all these sermons and messages and know what jesus did in his lifetime and how he treated his disciples and this and that verse 27 says this guys but he will say i tell you i do not know you <laughs> where are you from depart from me all you workers of iniquity. Right there, Jesus makes it very clear that he's going to say, depart to those that were working on righteousness, evil, sinfulness, wickedness. That's so important to Jesus because he is holy. Amen. He has called us to follow him. He's given us his word, teachers in the body of Christ. 
his own example, but also his own very spirit so that we can walk in his ways. Verse 28, it says, there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth when you see Abraham and Isaac and Jacob and all the prophets in the kingdom of God and yourselves thrust out. Right there, he just made it so clear that there's going to be people who have watched them, listened to his teachings, confessed his name, said, Lord, Lord. That's a confession, right? And because of their lifestyle, because he does not know them and they live in sin, he will tell them they cannot come into his kingdom where all the righteous prophets and all the righteous people who were justified by their faith in him, such as Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob are going to be. You're not going to be able to come into God's kingdom if you're not truly following Jesus and living the way he's called you to live as a disciple. So important. So this is another passage that makes it so clear to us that not all people will make it to his kingdom. Not all will be saved. It's God's will that they all be saved, but not all will be saved, unfortunately. Matthew 7, 21. Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, shall enter the kingdom of heaven, but he who does the will of my Father in heaven. So right there, Jesus again says the same thing, emphasizes the same warning in teaching to us. Just because you confess me doesn't mean I'm going to let you into my kingdom. The way I'm going to let you into my kingdom is if, of course, you know me, you believe in me, you follow me, but you also do the will of my Father. That's vital, guys. And here's the very last verse for you guys. This is such a good video. I want you guys to like this video. Leave a comment. Let me know if all these scriptures, because they are straight from the Bible, y'all. If all these scriptures are helping things make sense to you in your mind. Or bringing things to a clear perspective of what God's real will is for not just unbelievers to be saved, but for believers who are already uh, following Jesus or who already believe and confess in Jesus, what his will is for us to do, how he wants us to live so that we can make it to his kingdom, have eternal life and really be saved because salvation has not been completed. We were saved by grace. We believe we were justified by faith. And right now we're being saved, the Bible says, being justified. We have a hope of eternal life. It says if you have hope of something, it means it's not here yet. That's the only way you can hope for it. It's not completed yet, right? And, and in one day we will actually be completely saved. The salvation of our souls, the redemption of our bodies, we will be with the Lord. So it's so important that we make it, that we endure to the end because it's God's will that all be saved. Not all will be saved because many will not live for him. Jesus said, Narrow is the road. Wide is the road to destruction, to death. But narrow is the road, the path to eternal life through Jesus Christ. Amen. If all it took was a confession or, yeah, I believe in God. Or, yeah, I believe in Jesus. Yeah, I believe in that Bible. It wouldn't be narrow. It would be broad. Because there's millions, millions and millions of confessing Christians. That doesn't sound narrow. That sounds easy. It's tough to renew your mind. It's tough to learn how to put your flesh under subjection and deny yourself and your flesh and carnal desires. It's tough to learn how to walk in the spirit and deny yourself when you don't want to read, when you don't want to pray, when you don't want to fast, when you don't want to evangelize and share the good news with people who are complete strangers to you. That takes a little work and effort. That's why we need his strength, his grace, his power in us to work in us, to help us live this Christian life out. It's serious, y'all. Amen. Mark 6, 11 says, and whoever will not receive you nor hear you when you depart from there, shake off the dust under your feet as a testimony against them. So this is Jesus speaking to his disciples about doing ministry in different cities and towns, preaching the gospel, but getting rejected by people. It says, if they don't hear you, then depart from there and shake off the dust from your feet. Or surely I say to you, it will be more tolerable for Sodom and Gomorrah in the day of judgment. So Jesus is speaking of the day of judgment, futuristic, right? 
than for that city. What does this mean? Why did I bring this scripture up as the last scripture for us to remember in today's teaching, y'all? Because it's another clear indication that not all will be saved and that even though you preach the gospel to people and share the truth, the good news of Jesus to people, people will reject the message. People will reject you. And Jesus is saying he knows many are not going to receive the message. They will not believe and just keep it moving because if they don't believe, if they don't receive the message, one day they, they will all be judged just like everybody, right? And guess what? It's not going to be good. They're going to be judged and it's going to be better, more tolerable for Sodom and Gomorrah than them um, in Judgment Day. So it's a very, very serious thing, guys. So Jesus is saying, I died for everybody. Jesus died for everybody to be saved. Jesus shed his blood for the whole world. God so loved the whole world that he gave his only begotten son so that we don't perish but have everlasting life. But all the other scriptures show us that not everybody's going to be saved, even though it's God's will for everybody to be saved. Not everybody's going to be saved. People will reject the message. People will hate Christians in Christ and reject the good news of him. And guess what? They're going to receive judgment. They're going to perish. There's even going to be people who confess Jesus, who say they believe in Jesus. But James says, faith without works is dead. And there's going to be people who come to Jesus on judgment. They say, hey, Lord, Lord, hey, welcome me into your kingdom. He's going to say, I never knew you. Depart from me. You are a worker of sin. You did not endure to the end. You gave up. When that money tempted you, when that woman tempted you, when your ex tempted you, when that divorce tempted you, when that homosexuality tempted you and crept back into your life because you got molested when you were a child, you did not overcome temptation. You did not walk in my spirit. You did not be, uh, become a doer of my word, but instead you disobeyed me. You did not overcome. You did not persevere. You did not make it. You did not endure, so I'm sorry. I gave you years and years of time, of chances to live for me, to follow me, and to endure, to fight the good fight of faith. But you worked iniquity, so depart from me. Where there's weeping and gnashing of teeth. That's horrible. I know God doesn't want to do that. Um, but God is so righteous and just that he sends wicked and wickedness where it's supposed to go, just like the devil and his angels. You read all the Psalms and, and, and all the verses in the New Testament that are positive and have good things about the righteous and the just, but you will, uh, along that same place, you will see the negative statements about the unrighteous and the wicked and how God gives to the just rewards that are good and gives to the unrighteous rewards that are bad. That's just who God is. He's more fair than a parent who grounds his son. He's more fair than a, a, a 40 year old father who kicks out his 18 year old son for stealing all his stuff and, 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 and bringing drugs and bringing crime to his house. He's, he's more just than a father who kicks his son now his house because he's not following the house rules. God is more just than a principal or a dean of a school who kicks out a student that he loves, that he's forgiven so many times and gave so many chances and warnings to, but he won't follow the guidelines, right? And the student's handbook, he keeps stealing. He keeps fighting with people. He keeps, you know, going into the women's bathroom and he keeps, you know, watching people and skipping class and hanging out and playing cards and cussing everywhere and, and he keeps breaking all the rules so if a principal or a dean or or somebody who runs a school is just but merciful because people get chances people get warnings in school and at home from their parents but eventually like hey you grown I, I don't taught you the right way to go and I don't give you many chances and warnings I've been patient with you just like that verse says um, in, in, in 2 Corinthians 3, 9, the Lord is not slack concerning his promise as some count slackness, but is long suffering toward us. That means patient toward us. He's been so patient toward us, right? People are just and righteous because they will kick somebody out of a place that has been good to them and has been merciful and patient with them, but they don't follow the rules. That's just how Jesus is. It's Jesus who died for everybody to be saved. It's God's will for everybody to be saved, to believe, to repent, to not perish. But many 
will perish. Many will go to hell for eternity and suffer punishment for eternity because they will not believe, they will not follow, and they will not endure to the end keeping his word. The Bible says be a doer of the word, not a hearer only. The Bible says that Jesus said, why do you call me Lord, Lord, and not do what I say? That's so important to him. So guys, I hope this helped you, this convicted you, this blessed you. And I know somebody needs to hear is other than you. So please hit that share button. Share this on your Facebook, on your Twitter. Share the, 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 the thumbnail on your Instagram. Whatever you got to do to get this message out. Because there's so many people who are not taking God seriously because they think all they had to do was, you know, believe a little bit and, and confess and go to church, but they're, they're not going to make it to the end. So therefore he's not going to allow them into his kingdom. Then there's a lot of people who just don't believe in God. They don't believe in Jesus in the gospel. They haven't been born again because Christians like us are not out sharing the gospel with unbelievers. We're not evangelizing. We're not being the witnesses that Jesus commanded us to be. Okay. So share this video because there's a lot of Christians who think God chooses who to be saved, who not. To. Jesus died for everybody to be saved. So we have to preach the gospel so that they can hear it, know it, believe it and be born again. You know, and we know many are not going to believe many are not going to be born again, but we don't know who's who. So we have to preach it to as many people as we can. Let's get out there. So share this video. Take God seriously. Take evangelism seriously. And if, you, if, if you're not following Jesus, if you, if you haven't believed in Jesus all your life and you're just not watching this video, listen, you're only going to live here so many years. Not even. You might have an accident tomorrow, but eternity is forever. And this word that we preach has been preached for thousands of years, was preached by people who were alive with Jesus and saw him resurrect. And these things were written in letters and these manuscripts these ancient manuscripts have been saved for thousands of years this is the truth this is history we're preaching here christianity is true y'all so you have to believe in this jesus to have eternal life believe in him and he's going to forgive you of your sins because he is that sacrifice for your sins he loves you that much and then get a bible once you believe in him once you can once you believe in him and turn to him and say, Lord, I believe in you. If you believe in your heart, you're going to start talking to him because you're going to believe he hears you and he's real. Then you get a Bible, start reading the Bible, start reading the New Testament. Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, see what Jesus did and taught. See what his disciples looked like in the book of Acts. And then read the letters, Romans, all the way to Revelation and see what Christians are supposed to be learning and doing and teaching. And ask the Lord to help you, to grow you, to mature you so that you can live life the way he's called us and commanded us to live so that we can make it to the end and endure walk in the spirit not in the flesh leave your sins leave your past leave your upbringing look for some christians around your area look for some more teachings like these look for some christian books that seem like they're about growing in relationship with god growing in, in good fruit growing and being transformed having holy kind of get get those books don't get the other books that are about entertainment or about money or about careers and leadership get the books that are going to help you live more christ life because when jesus comes back that's what he's going to look for in us he's going to judge everybody according to our works and only those who endure to the end and who make it those who remain unstained by the world who prepare themselves for him and save themselves for him, those are the ones he's going to allow into his kingdom. Maybe there's a gathering, maybe there's a home meeting, a home church, um, house church where you are. Maybe there's just a, a church in a regular building, one of those nice churches somewhere. Maybe there's a church at a warehouse somewhere. Maybe there's a church that holds services at a movie theater, at a hotel conference room. Just, just look, ask God to lead you and guide you, the people that are going to help you grow. Look, Jesus is the only way. And if you don't believe in him, if you don't follow him, if you don't start keeping the, the things that he taught and commanded when he was walking on this earth with his apostles, you're not going to make it. You're not going to make it to the end. He's not going to let you in his kingdom. And the opposite of, of God's kingdom, it's not the devil's kingdom where everybody has fun. The opposite of God's kingdom, the only other place that exists 
for people to go for all eternity is the lake of fire, the place of punishment, hell, where there is torment and torture that never ends, crying and weeping and gnashing that never stops. It's never going to stop. You will never die in eternity. You will just suffer forever. You don't want to go there. But God made that place because God hates wickedness and evil and he hates the devil and the angels that rebelled against him so he made a place called hell for them but then the devil he deceived humankind was god created mankind and now mankind started acting evil and wicked and guess what god hates wickedness and evil still regardless of him not not meaning for humans to act like that he still hates wickedness and evil now it's on our nature Right. So he sent Jesus to die for us so that we can not only be forgiven of our sins because people were being forgiven of our sins by little animals being sacrificed and killed back in the day. But so that his spirit could come inside of us and we can start living holy and bearing good fruit and doing good works to God so that we can endure to the end and be allowed into his kingdom. Does that make sense? So hell was made for wickedness and evil and the devil Satan, he transferred that to humanity that's why we have to be born again meaning we have to receive his spirit in us to make us new creations a new people with a new identity new purpose new potential the holy spirit so we can live in the spirit and please god the bible says he who walks in the flesh this is your flesh your body carnality where sin is he who walks in the flesh he who walks sinfully cannot please god only those who walk in the spirit bless you guys Grow in Christ, continue to grow. Share this video, people need to hear this. Subscribe to this YouTube channel. Uh, I think we just got to a thousand subscribers. We wanna get to more thousand subscribers. We want people to mature. We want Christians to grow up in Christ. We need to grow up in Christ, y'all. We need to stop acting like we just got saved yesterday. We need to stop living like babes. We need to really understand what the will of God is. A lot of us are supposed to have been teachers already, but we're so immature because we haven't been taking God seriously. We haven't been reading his word. We haven't been listening to teachings like these. We've been running away from them and we've been running to the teachings that only encourage us and comfort us and tell us we're going to be blessed and rich and we're going to be famous and people are this and that. Listen, it's time to grow. So like this video, share this video, subscribe to the YouTube channel. I'll see y'all next time. Jesus died for everyone to be saved but not everyone can be saved and that's what we come in let's grow bless you guys take care